Welcome to EPG Padasala. This is Dr. Gayatri Devi, Associate Professor from the Department of Biochemistry, Biotechnology and Bioinformatics, Avinash Lingam Institute for Home Science and Higher Education for Women, Coimbatore. Today, we are going to see about the role of neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are the brain endogenous chemicals that enable communication throughout the brain and body by transmitting signals across a chemical synapse such as neuromuscular junction from one neuron to the next across the synapse muscle cells or gland cells. These are small molecules which are liberated by presynaptic neuron into the synaptic cleft and cause a modification in the postsynaptic membrane potential. This change can be either a direct depolarization or hyperpolarization or the activis activation of second messengers that finally lead to changes in firing rate. There are other molecules that act on the neuron and change its firing characteristics but act from a distance and are not involved in synaptic transmission and these are called neuromodulators. Let us see about the definition, history of neurotransmitters. The existence of neurotransmitter was first discovered by an Austrian scientist named Otto Lowy in the year 1921. He dreamt of an experiment which he did practically and came out with this discovery. So what is that experiment? Otto Lowy used two frogs for this experiment. Heart of frog A was with intact vagus nerve and was placed in a saline filled chamber. Heart of frog B was denervated and was kept in another saline filled chamber. Both the chambers were now connected in such a way that the fluid from chamber of frog A could flow into the chamber of frog B. When vagus nerve of frog A was electrically stimulated, slowing of heart rate was observed. After a short delay, the heart rate in frog B was also found to be slowing down. From this observation, Lowy speculated that some chemical substance must have been released from the va vagus nerve of frog A, which was responsible for the slowing down of the heart rate in frog B. He named it as vagus stuff. Later, this chemical substance was considered as a neurotransmitter and called acetylcholine. So what is the criteria for neurotransmitters? Many substances are categorized as a neurotransmitters for which it should fulfill the criteria. It must be found in a neuron, it must be produced by a neuron and it must be released by a neuron. After the release, it must act on the target area and produce some biological effect. After the action, it must be inactivated. So these are the criteria. Now coming to classification. Neurotransmitters can be classified into various types based on their chemical nature and its function. This is clearly illustrated in table 1. Depending upon the chemical nature, that is many substance of different chemical nature are identified as neurotransmitters. Depending upon their chemical nature, they can be classified into three groups. They are amino acids, that is the neurotransmitters of this group are involved in fast synaptic transmission and are inhibitory and as well as excitatory in action. GABA, that is gamma amino butyric acid, glycine, glutamate and aspartate, that is glutamic acid and aspartic acid belong to this group. The second one is amines. They are modified into, amines are the modified amino acids. These neurotransmitters involved in slow synaptic transmission and these neurotransmitters are also inhibitory and excitatory in action. Example for this is noradrenaline, adrenaline, dopamine, serotonin and histamine. This table clearly illustrates about the different categories of neurotransmitters that is amino acids, amines and the third category, others. 
So some neurotransmitters do not fit into any of these categories. One such substance is called acetylcholine. It is formed from the choline and acetyl coenzyme A in the presence of the other enzyme called choline acetyl transferase. Another substance included in this category is the soluble gas nitric oxide. And depending upon the function, some of the neurotransmitters can cause excitation of postsynaptic neuron while others cause inhibition. Thus, neurotransmitters are classified into two types, excitatory neurotransmitters and inhibitory neurotransmitters. So, let us see about excitatory neurotransmitters. Excitatory neurotransmitters are a chemical substance which is responsible for the conduction of impulse from presynaptic neuron to postsynaptic neuron. Neurotransmitters released from the presynaptic axon, axon terminal does not cause development of action potential in the postsynaptic neuron. Rather, it causes some change in the resting membrane potential that is slight depolarization by the opening of sodium channels in the postsynaptic membrane and the influx of sodium ions from extracellular fluid. This slight depolarization is called excitatory postsynaptic potential that is EPSP. So this EPSP in turn causes development of action potential in the initial segment of the axon of the postsynaptic neuron. Common excitatory neurotransmitters are acetylcholine and noradrenaline. So this second type of uh, classification is also clearly given in this tabular column. The inhibited neurotransmitters is a chemical substance which inhibits the conduction of impulse from the presynaptic neuron to the postsynaptic neuron. When it is released from the presynaptic axon terminal due to the arrival of action potential, it causes opening of potassium channels in the postsynaptic membrane and efflux of potassium ions. This leads to hyperpolarization which is called the inhibitory postsynaptic potential that is IPSP. When IPSP is developed, the action potential is not generated in the postsynaptic neuron. So common inhibitory neurotransmitters are GABA that is gamma amino butyric acid and dopamine. Let us move on to the transport and release of neurotransmitters, how it is being happening. So neurotransmitter that is produced in the cell body of the neuron, it is transported through the axon. At the axon terminal, the neurotransmitter is stored in small packets called vesicles. Under the influence of a stimulus, these vesicles open and release the neurotransmitter into synaptic cleft. It binds to specific receptors on the surface of the postsynaptic cell. Receptors are G proteins, protein kinase or ligand gated receptors. Inactivation of the neurotransmitter. So after the execution of the action, these neurotransmitters are inactivated by four different mechanisms. They are, it diffuses out of the synaptic cleft to the area where it has no action or it is destroyed or disintegrated by specific enzymes. It is engulfed and removed by astrocytes that is microphage, macrophages and finally it can be removed by means of reuptake into the axon terminal. So what is happening in reuptake? Reuptake is a process by which the neurotransmitter is taken back from the synaptic cleft into axon terminal after execution of its action. So reuptake process involves a specific carrier protein for each neurotransmitters. Now let us move on to some of the important neurotransmitters. So first one is acetylcholine. It is a cholinergic neurotransmitter and it possesses excitatory function. It produces the excitatory function by opening the ligand gated sodium channels. And this acetylcholine substance is transmitted at the neuromuscular junction and synapse. It is also released by the following nerve endings. They are preganglionic parasympathetic nerve, postganglionic parasympathetic nerve, preganglionic sympathetic nerve and postganglionic sympathetic cholinergic nerves. Apart from that, the nerve supplying 
eccrine sweat glands, sympathetic vasodilator nerves in skeletal muscle, nerves in amacrine cells of retina and many regions of brain. Where is this acetylcholine synthesized? They are synthesized in the cholinergic nerve endings. The synthesis takes place in axoplasm and they are stored in the vesicles. It is synthesized from the enzyme acetyl coenzyme A and combines with choline. In the presence of the enzyme, choline acetyl transferase to form acetylcholine. It is given here in the figure that is how the synthesis and breakdown of acetylcholine is taking place. So, what is the fate of the acetylcholine that is produced? Mainly, the action of acetylcholine is short lived. Within 1 millisecond after the release from the vesicles, it is hydrolyzed into acetate and choline by the enzyme acetylcholine esterase. This enzyme is present in basal lamina of the synaptic cleft. And what are the receptors for acetylcholine? There are two types of receptors available through which the acetylcholine acts on the tissues, namely muscarinic receptors and nicotinic receptors. Reason for the terminology of these receptors are the poisonous substances from toadstools called muscarin acts on a specific group of receptors known as muscarinic receptors. Similarly, another substance called nicotine acts on a specific group of receptors known as nicotinic receptors. But acetylcholine acts on both the receptors. The muscarinic receptors are present in all the organs innervated by the postganglionic fibers of the parasympathetic system and by the sympathetic cholinergic nerves. Nicotinic receptors are present in the snaps between the preganglionic and postganglionic neurons of both sympathetic and parasympathetic systems. Nicotinic receptors are also present in the neuromuscular junction on membrane of skeletal muscles. Next let us see about noradrenaline. Noradrenaline is a neurotransmitter in adrenergic nerve fibers. It is relieved from the following structures that is postganglionic sympathetic nerve endings, cerebral cortex, hypothalamus, basal ganglia, brain stem, locus cerulus in pons and spinal cord. In many places noradrenaline is the excitatory chemical mediator and in very few places it causes inhibition. It is believed to be involved in dreams, arousal and elevation of moods. The next one is dopamine. It is secreted by the nerve endings in the basal ganglia, hypothalamus, limbic system, neocortex, retina, small intensely fluorescent cells in sympathetic ganglia. Dopamine, it possesses the inhibitory action. The prolactin inhibitory hormone secreted by hypothalamus is considered to be dopamine. Coming to serotonin, it is otherwise known as 5-hydroxytryptamine. Serotonin is synthesized from tryptophan by hydroxylation and decarboxylation. Large amount of serotonin, about 90%, is found in the enterochromatin cells of GI tract. Small amount of it is found in the platelets and nervous system. It is secreted in the structures like hypothalamus, limbic system, cerebellum, dorsal rough nucleus of midbrain, spinal cord, retina, GI tract, lungs and platelets. This is also an inhibitory substance and it inhibits the impulses of pain sensation in the posterior grey horn of spinal cord. It is supposed to cause depression of mood and sleep. Serotonin causes vasoconstriction, platelet aggregation and smooth muscle contraction. It also controls food intake. Next we are moving on to histamine. Histamine is secreted in the nerve endings of hypothalamus, limbic cortex and other parts of cerebral cortex. It is also secreted by gastric mucosa and mast cells. Histamine is an excitatory neurotransmitter. It is believed to play an important role in arousal mechanism. Now let us see about gamma amino butyric acid that is GABA. It is an inhibitory neurotransmitter in synapses particularly in CNS. It is responsible for presynaptic inhibition and secreted by the nerve endings of cerebral cortex, cerebellum, basal ganglia, spinal cord and retina. 
it causes synaptic inhibition by opening the potassium channels and chloride channels. So, potassium comes out of the synapse and chloride enters. This leads to hyperpolarization which is known as inhibitory postsynaptic potential IPSP. Substance P. Substance P is a neuropeptide that acts as a neurotransmitter and also as a neuromodulator. It is a polypeptide with 11 amino acid residues. It belongs to the family of three related peptides called neurokinin or tachykinins. The other peptides of this family are neurokinin A and neurokinin B which are not a well known like substance. Substance P is secreted by the nerve endings of pain pathway in spinal cord. It is also found in many peripheral nerves, different parts of brain particularly hypothalamus, retina and intestine. It mediates the pain sensation. It is a potent vasodilator in CNS. It is also responsible for the regulation of anxiety, stress, mood disorders, neurotoxicity, nausea and vomiting. Nitric oxide. It is a neurotransmitter in the CNS that is central nervous system. It is also an important neurotransmitter in the neuromuscular junctions between the inhibitory motor fibers of intrinsic nerve plexus and the smooth muscle fibers of GI tract. Nitric oxide acts as a mediator for the dilator effect of acetylcholine on small arteries. In the smooth muscle fibers of arterioles, this nitric oxide activates the enzyme guanylyl cyclase which in turn causes the formation of cyclic guanosine monophosphate that is CGMP from GMP. The CGMP is as a smooth muscle relaxant and it causes dilation of arterioles. Thus, nitric oxide indirectly causes dilation of arterioles. Peculiarity of nitric oxide is that it is neither produced by the neuronal cells nor stored in the vesicles. It is produced by non-neuronal cells like the endothelial cells of blood vessels. From the site of production, it diffuses into the neuronal and non-neuronal cells where it exerts its action. Now let us move on to neuromodulators. Neuromodulators are the chemical messengers which modifies and regulates the activities that take place during the synaptic transmission. These peptides do not propagate nerve impulses like neurotransmitters. Neuromodulators versus neurotransmitters that is when comparing to both neuromodulators are distinct from neurotransmitters. The neurotransmitters propagate the nerve impulses through synapse whereas neuromodulators modify and regulate the activities of synaptic transmission. Neurotransmitters are packed in small vesicles in axon terminals only. The following table clearly gives the distinction between both neurotransmitters and neuromodulators. But the neuromodulators are generally packed in large synaptic vesicles which are present in all parts of the neuron like soma, dendrite, axon and nerve endings. Many neurons have one conventional neurotransmitter and one or more neuromodulators. Few peptides like substances P act as neurotransmitters and neuromodulators. Now we are moving on to the actions of neuromodulators. Neurotransmitters affect the excitability of other neurons or other tissues by producing depolarization or hyperpolarization through the receptors of ionic channels. But neuromodulators have diverse actions such as regulation of synthesis, breakdown or reuptake of neurotransmitters, excitation or inhibition of membrane receptors by acting independently or together with neurotransmitters, control of gene expression, regulation of local blood flow, promotion of synaptic formation, control of glial cell morphology and regulation of behavior. Generally, the neuromodulators are peptides. So, they are often referred as neuropeptides. Almost all the peptides found in nervous tissues are neuromodulators. They are classified into two types as non-opioid peptides and opioid peptides. 
First let us see about non-opioid peptides. They are the peptides which act by binding with the G protein coupled receptors. These neuropeptides are also called as non-opioid neuromodulators. Whereas the opioid peptides are the one which binds to opioid receptors and they are also called opioid neuropeptides or opioid neuromodulators. Opioid receptors are the membrane protein located in inner endings in the brain and GI tract. They are of three types as mu, kappa and delta. These proteins are called opioid receptors because of their affinity towards the opiate or morphine which are derived from opium. Opium is the juice of white poppy that is papaver somniferum. It is also used as a narcotic to produce hallucinations and induce sleep. Opiate also induce sleep. Morphine is a powerful analgesic that is a pain reliever. So both opiate and morphine have high medicinal values but they are highly addictive. These two substances act by binding with the receptor proteins of the opioid receptors for the natural neuropeptides. Natural neuropeptides are called endogenous opioid peptides. The endogenous opioid peptides have opiate like activity and inhibit the neurons in the brain involved in brain sensation. Opioid peptides are of three types. They are encephalins, dynorphins and endorphins. Encephalins, they are the natural opiate peptides recognized first in pig's brain. They are derived from the precursor proencephalin and these peptides are present in the nerve endings in many parts of the forebrain, substantia gelatinosa of brainstem, spinal cord and GI tract. Two types of encephalins are known as leucine encephalin and methionine encephalin. Dynorphins. They are derived from prodynorphin. Dynorphins are found in hypothalamus, posterior pituitary and duodenum. Dynorphins are of two types as alpha and beta dynorphins. Next we are moving on to endonorphins. Endonorphins are the large peptides derived from the precursor pro melanocortin. Endorphins are predominant in diencephalic region, particularly in hypothalamus, and anterior and the intermediate lobes of pituitary gland. Three types of endonorphins are recognized. They are alpha, beta and gamma endorphins. We are just moving on to the co-transmission and co-transmitters. Co-transmission is the release of many neurotransmitters from a single nerve terminal. They are the neurotransmitter substances that are released in addition to the primary transmitter at the nerve endings. This table shows about the non-opioid substances like bradykinin, substance P, secretin, CCK, gastrin, PIP, motilin, neurotensin, vasopressin, oxytocin, CRH, GHRH, GHRP, TRH, somatostatin, ANP, BNP, CNP, neuropeptide Y, jeharelin. Hence, this module can be concluded by saying that the neurotransmitters are the endogenous chemicals produced in the cell body and are carried to the terminal synaptic cleft of the axon where they are enclosed into vesicles and stay close to the synaptic region. The excitatory neurotransmitter is responsible for the conduction of impulse from presynaptic neuron to postsynaptic neuron whereas the inhibitory neurotransmitter inhibits the conduction of impulse from presynaptic neuron to the postsynaptic neuron. Neuromodulators are the chemical messengers which helps to modify the and regulates the activities during synaptic transmission. Thank you.